let's get schwindy. How's it going there, YouTube? Coming at you with a very important video today. So I'm gonna be discussing relays, not only how to hook them up and how to wire them, but more importantly, when it dictates to use them, because this is gonna save you a lot of headaches electrically down the road. And as you start to expand your knowledge and install more of your gear, whether it's your security system, accessories for your car audio system, you're gonna to wanna to know how and when to use these. I mean, just in this build alone, as you can see back here, my LED lights, those are ran off relays. My cooling fans, those are ran off relays. A lot of components in my security system are ran off relays and all for very good reason. So make sure to stay tuned so you can take your ride to the next level. Let's get loud. All right, YouTube. So what you see here is a standard 12 volt, 30 amp automotive relay. This is a SPDT, which means single pole, double throw. And we'll go into that and how this differs from a SPST or a double pole relay. But uh, this is one that I recommend you get familiar with and use. Uh, there's a lot of applications where you can use a single pole, single throw, um, but a single pole, single throw cannot do what an SPDT can do. That's why I recommend using SPDT and getting familiar with it because it does the same job as a SPST as well. So that is why I use these exclusively. And if I need it for a SPST, which is a single throw, then I just do not use the middle one, which is the 87 alpha in this case, the white uh, wire there, all right? So let's go ahead and dive into this and what all that terminology means. All right, so first off, here you go, the basic relay. Uh, this one actually comes with a wire pigtail. Not all of them do. Uh, I recommend it, it makes it easier to wire. But if you just get the relay itself, this is what you're left with, okay? They got the little wiring diagram there. Uh, Bosch is you know, probably the most popular one. This one is an off-brand, but it still works just fine. And as you can see here, you have the numbers. You have all the numbering. So on the bottom here, you got 30, which is your common connection. Uh, the left and right, you got 85 and you got 86. Okay, those are your coils. Okay, and one's positive, one's negative. And in all honesty, it doesn't matter. You can put positive here, negative here, or positive here, negative here. The only way it matters is if you are running an inline diode. Then you need to make sure that the positive is on the cathode side of the diode. Uh, that's a little advanced, don't need to worry about that, okay? Don't wanna cause more confusion. The top one here is your normally open, and the middle one there, which is uh, your 87 alpha, so that one's 87, the middle's 87 alpha, that one is normally closed, all right? First, let's talk why would somebody need to use a relay? There's many situations that we're not gonna get into today, um, especially if you do car security installs, if you wanna reverse polarity uh, on a circuit or you know, do something for door actuators, you know, that's, that's a whole nother level. But for the basic installer that's looking to maybe add some cooling fans to their car audio system, or maybe some, you know, some lighting, some neon lighting, whatever the case may be, these are gonna be instrumental to you to understand how and why you would need to use these. Okay, what I see a lot of people do, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it, but I see a lot of people do it wrong. You know, when people want to put a cooling fan on their amplifier, I see a lot of people make the mistake of, you know, running the power wire, uh, you know, right to their remote turn on for their amp, right, coming out of their head unit. And that's a big mistake because that wire isn't going to provide enough amperage for you to run a big uh, lighting system, let alone cooling fans or things like that. So that's when this would come into play is, you know, this is going to take the input of a switch source. It's going to be, it's called the trigger. It's going to trigger the relay and you're going to tap your relay into a greater power source, whether it's, you know, a direct run from the battery, um, you know, a positive distribution block, something that's going to have the capability to give your components that you're trying to add more power and not try to squeeze, you know, as much power as you can out of a little wire that isn't meant for that demand, all right? So in that situation, you know, let us let me show you how you would wire that up. Let's say you were trying to add some cooling fans uh, to your amplifier setup. This is how you would wire it. Now, you can always just wire it on a manual switch, right? Let me uh, come in here really quick. I got a ton of switches. <laughs> you know, you could always use a good old fashioned manual switch, right? On, off, on, off. 
but this does it for you automatically, right? In a regular switch, you are the trigger, right? I'm the trigger, I'm triggering this. But in a relay, you're using electrical voltage to trigger the relay so you don't manually have to switch the switch, if that makes sense, okay? So this is how you would wire your relay if you were going to add, let's say, neon lighting or a cooling fan to your car audio build. Okay, let me go ahead and draw it out for you. All right, so there you go. All drawn out with the orientation that we got here. Again, your top terminal is 87. The middle one is 87A, okay? That's a terminal that's normally closed and that's one that's normally open. I'll kind of explain that in a little bit here. On your left and right, you got terminal 86, terminal 85. Those are your coils. And I'll explain what that is as well. And then the bottom is terminal 30. That's your common terminal. So. Like I said, let's say you were trying to install a cooling fan or an LED lighting system, whatever the case, and you didn't want to pull it from a low amperage source, but you wanted to use a trigger. Um, so this is what you would do. You would take uh, the 87 and you would connect that to a constant 12 volt source. You would connect it to where you want your accessories to run off of. So that could be, you know, directly to the battery. That could be to a heavier gauge wire, you know, maybe your uh, amplifier distribution block, your positive. This is where the accessories that you're going to connect to this relay are going to get its power from. So 87 would go to that purpose. Now, 86 and 85, this is going to be your coil, okay? And your coil is what activates the switch. So one is gonna be positive and one is gonna be negative. Now, unless there's a diode being ran in the circuit, you don't need to worry about which one's positive and which one's negative, okay? You can do either one. Um, I typically, you know, put 86 positive and uh, 85 negative, but it can be switched. So let's say you take 85 and run that to ground or to negative. 86, okay, what that's gonna be is your trigger. Okay, and what's your trigger wire? That could be your remote turn on wire. That could be your power antenna wire. That could be anything that when you turn your car on or you turn the power on to your radio, what, whatever you want your relay to turn on, that's gonna be the trigger for it. Okay, so again, if you want your neon lighting or your cooling fan to be turned on with your head unit, then use your uh, remote outline from your head unit as your trigger. If you want your neon lighting to turn on every time you turn your car on, then don't connect your trigger wire using your head unit. Use a accessory wire coming from your ignition. So your, whenever you turn your ignition on, it'll trigger the relay and it'll then send power to your neon lights or whatever, right? So whatever you want uh, to trigger, just understand that the trigger is going to be the source that turns on your relay, all right? Now, your 30, that is going to go to your cooling fans or your LED lighting or any accessory that you want to be ran off of this 12 volt constant, right? So that way it's not taking all the power it's not, it's not trying to run off your trigger here, right? It's getting its power from the 12 volt constant. So all that does is when your trigger um, gets activated by a signal coming out of your head unit from your ignition, whatever the case may be, that voltage, okay, it's gonna close the circuit and it's going to connect this and this together. So that way, all your accessories down here that are connected to this relay have power, all right? So this is probably the most common thing that you're going to use when using these relays if you're just doing basic installs. Um, again, you don't need to use the SPDT. An SPST, which is a SP sing, uh, single pole, single throw, basically just eliminates the 87 alpha right there. So a SPST just has these four. Um, so you can get away with using SPST for most of your installs. But again, all I have in my shop are the SPDTs because you can use an SPDT in place of an SPSD, right? You just don't use the middle one there. So instead of having two different relays, I just have a bunch of these laying around. 
So yeah, guys, that, that's really all there is to it. Um, you know, there's a lot of advanced ways and techniques of using these, but for the average do-it-yourselfer out there that's looking just to install a cooling fan or like I said, some LED lighting or whatever the case may be, that's gonna be, you know, how you utilize these primarily. Now, these colors don't always match up to every manufacturer. I've seen these colors, uh, you know, be switched around, you know, pinned differently, so don't, uh, you know, base your install off the colors because, you know, in this situation here, uh, you got 30 is red, okay? You got 85 black, 86 yellow, 87 blue, and 87A white. Hey, that's for this manufacturer of this pigtail. I've seen different relays, you know, have different colors. I've seen red here, I've seen white there, I've seen black down here. So don't necessarily base it off the color, all right? Just make sure that you always pull off the uh, pigtail and look at the actual pinout. Well, there you have it, YouTube. I hope that helped add value to the Colorado community. Again, if anybody has any specific questions on anything you heard or have any specific install situations, feel free to shoot a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, make sure to like this video, subscribe, turn on those notifications so you don't miss how to take your ride to the next level. Let's get loud.